Well, hello. It's Coffee and Connections with the captain today, as the chief was unable to attend this session um, for the January, as he got pulled away to another incident or call. So I'm here today to talk about the, the PD, the operations as I normally do, and to talk about some of the other things going on um, within the PD and dispatch and animal control, which is now a municipal police officer. So our first things that we're dealing with is the budget. The budget is pretty much all done. We have a public hearing with the budget committee on the 11th Wednesday. Um, that would be the final hearing for, the, for our budget. Um, our budget is pretty much uh, finalized. It's looking good. Um, not much increases at all. Um, they do have a union contract this year. So our officers and dispatchers have a union contract that will be in a Warren article. Um, I hopefully everyone reviews that and I hope everyone supports that as as we all do um, That process is a different process. Remember that's a process with the town and the commissioners nothing to do with the chief and I um, When they negotiate those things um, they're looking at they did finalize a um, a Contract which is a two-year contract um, so it should be out within the public. It should be, I believe it, you can get it now at, down at Town Hall um, if you want to review that um, union contract with the police and dispatchers. Um, everything else that's going on, we have the deliberative session that's going to be February 7th, which is a Tuesday. It's usually the Tuesday, February 7th. Um, that will be with the final where the public can come out and add anything if they wish to um, on that day. So I believe that's gonna be at the Great Hall, usually is. Once in a while they do move it to the Art Center, but I believe we're back to the Great Hall um, with COVID kind of passing through COVID. Um, so with all that, um, the department's doing well as we move into January. Our budget for 2022 is over. Um, I think we came in with approximately 17,000, 18,000 to return back in that ballpark. Um, we haven't finalized that yet. Usually it gets finalized sometime in the middle of February. So we'll have those numbers for you, hopefully, um, <coughs> excuse me, in the February um, edition that we can come into. I think we'll, we'll, we'll have a better um, numbers coming into the end of January. So when we get into the February um, Coffee and Connections, I'll have those numbers for you and everyone else. So um, as we get into operations, we have the highway safety grants. So the highway safety grants, we have a good amount of highway safety grants. It's in our budget. We put it in there. Um, so we have um, distractive driving, speed, uh, pedestrian, which is a great one that we can use our uh, mountain bikes on to to get extra patrols in the downtown area. Um, we have um, driving while intoxicated, and we have some other um, seatbelt um, ones. It's click it or ticket. That one's more focused on the mornings at the schools with the kids to educate them that the seatbelts are important. Seatbelts are a law, especially 18 and older. So usually you'll see us there in May um, conducting those um, grants. Um, sometime, I believe it's the second or third week of May, <coughs> we'll be down there. You'll see a couple officers in that general area. Um, as we move into um, operations, everything's going well. The sergeants, um, if you have anything with community relations, we I want you to contact Sergeant Sparra. He's our community relations. Um, officer so he takes care of anything that you need out and about with um, organizing any community community uh, functions that you need us for because we do a lot of things outside of the PD that you normally don't see uh, on the patrol yeah you see our officers out on patrol and everything um, but you never see the the back the little stuff we do on the inside with the community we try to get that out on Facebook as much as possible um, please check out our Facebook page. You'll see all that stuff. Um, the stuff. The one thing that just ended was the Christmas fund. Um, dispatcher, supervisor, dispatcher Mia Lyons takes care of that. What an incredible job she does every year on this. You got to imagine how many toys, gifts come into the police department 
um, during the month of December, really near the end of November. So we we kind of use the space. We used to use the training room, but now we really can't do that because um, we, we use that training room a lot. So she has to use one of the bays in the fire, um, in the garage bays in the back, and she takes a, an entire bay full of toys. So it's a great um, organization that, that pops in there, a great charity. A lot of people donate to it. Uh, she organizes it all out. She puts it all out there. She gets it everyone their gifts before Christmas and um, they come and pick it up or we deliver it one way or the other. They do get, the kids get their toys and clothes or anything that they needed for the holiday months. So that's a, that's a great program that she does, excellent work. Nobody really sees that behind the scenes, um, the organization to it, the logistics to it. Um, it's remarkable what she does every year on that. Um, with, um, so sometimes I think we're looking at April, but the, the radar signs and all that is is put back for the winter months, so we're not going to have that out there. So if you need that coming up, uh, mostly sometime in April, um, you want to contact Sergeant Puglio for that. Um, he he takes care of all the radars, the signs, and placements of the radar trailer, if you do need that for this year. Um, so not too much else with the officers. We do have, um, we did make a, a conditional offer on an officer. Um, so he's going through the process right now. We're looking at February, trying to get him into the academy. We have one going into the academy actually next week, the 8th. Um, Chris Dustin, who used to be our part-time officer, moved to our full-time position. Um, we've been talking about that. <coughs> Excuse me, got a little cough. Um, but we're looking at um, Officer Chris Dustin moving on the 8th, which is next Monday, as I'm sitting here. Um, he starts the police academy for 16 weeks. So we do lose him for 16 weeks. Maybe we'll see him on the weekends here and there taking a shift or so. But um, he'll be down at the academy for 16 weeks, finishing that, getting his certification, his full-time certification, because he already has a part-time certification. And then the new officer, they have their next academy in February. Um, I think it starts February 25th or 24th. We're looking at getting him into that position, into that academy. There's not too many spots left. It all depends on how quickly we can get this background done. And the agility test um, to make him so he can take that test, uh, which I believe would be at the end of this month for that academy. So if that doesn't happen, he will be going into the June academy. I know there's a big break there. so. Then it will be 16 weeks. He'll be gone for the month of uh, the summer. Um, and then field training comes back. And we'd we'll be looking at maybe December of, or January of next year that he'd be on his own. So that's why we're trying to get that February. But it all depends on the background and all the paperwork that we have to get in there. It's, it's, it's a challenge. The background takes, is a process. So, and we want to make sure we do it right. Um, with, with Dustin, we don't have to do a field training, which is nice. So once he finishes the 16 weeks, because he's got a part-time certification, he comes right back into the rotation in patrol, and he's ready to go. So that's a, that's a good thing. We only lose him for 16 weeks in, uh, in the patrol shifts. So as you can tell, right now we're, down, we're going to be down two officers in patrol shifts, which makes our officers work a little bit more because there's going to be some overtime shifts because we're 24-7, and we have to fill all those shifts that are not covered. So... Um, Lieutenant Maloney is taking care of the schedule. He's making sure and managing all that and making sure um, all the shifts are covered. We least like to have two officers every shift as much as possible, except for that midnight shift. Um, we don't have that right now because we technically most of the time have somebody out, two officers out till 2 a.m. and back on at 6 a.m. That's, that's how the shifts kind of go right now. So that midnight officer is alone by themselves from two to six, and sometimes earlier or later, depending on vacations <coughs> and um, officers taking time off or sick leave or anything like that or training. So um, other than that, um, in dispatch, we're always looking for part-time help. If you want to come into the career of dispatching, it's not for everybody. It's a challenge. It's, it's hard. There's a lot of... Um, different things than the normal um, job. There's a lot of, lot of communications as they take care of 
fire, police, water, sewer, electric after hours. So there's a lot of things that go on within the um, confines of the dispatch center, and they do a lot for this town. So, but we're always looking for part-time help. Uh, if you're looking in, put a resume in, give it to Supervisor Mia Lyons. She'll take it and do the interview process from there and meet, meet up with you. And if you get selected, then you'll get into training. Uh, we do a little field training with dispatchers too, which is a great thing. Um, same thing as it's very similar to the um, officers that they work on. So, but it gets them ready to be on their own. Um, it's going to take a little while because most time part-timers, you have another job. So we understand that. But we would love your help. Um, we're always looking for it. So if you want to get it out there, again, give your resume over to Supervisor Mia Lyons, or you can send it to me, and I'll get it over to her, and she'll give you and she'll contact you with that. Other than that, we have two warrant articles. Get back into that. So we have two warrant articles. One is for a new SRO, which is a school resource officer up at the school. So let me try to explain what that entails and what that means. Um, <coughs> so the school resource officer, the town will only pay half of the portion. And then the school pays the other half of the portion. So it's only half of a year for next year um, because we're looking at hiring that individual in June getting them ready for or her ready for um, the school resource officer for a second one up at the middle school. Um, sometime in September, at the end of August, the school will pick up half of that um, salary and benefits. Um, so you'll see a Warren article in the, in the town and you'll see a Warren article in the school. So as long as they both pass, this officer will come on board. This will be an additional officer. This will give us 15 officers, as we have 14 right now. This will give us 15 um, officers, two up at the school. And then in the summertime, th those officers come back and patrol and help us in the summer months. Because look, yes, we have 15 officers, but our officers like to take vacations. And, and what is the best time? When, you're, when you have the lake behind us here, uh, is to take a vacation. So they fill in the shifts. We get the mountain bike patrol out, so we get more patrols into the downtown area. So that does help us there, too. So that's a great addition. Um, I hope you support it. We all do. The, I, I know the um, commissioners are um, out there getting their word out there with the school and the schools uh, for it. They're going to put the Warren article in the t into their voting. Uh, in March too, so you'll see that one for the town, one for the school. They split the cost um, of the officer, and then next year will be a full, full year. So remember that this is only a half a year. Next year will be a full year. It automatically comes into it. The other warrant article we do have is for a cruiser. So we have 11 cruisers in our operation. Um, we have four or five of them um, that are over 100,000 miles. So every year we ask for a cruiser. It's that's how we get around, that's how we get to our calls, that's our operation, that's our main operation. The most of our officers, that's their desk. They have a computer in there, laptop, a mobile data unit that communicates with dispatch, that gets their um, reports done. Now, if they get larger reports, they come back to the PD and get it done. It's just hard to do into a PD, I mean, in a cruiser, everything in there. But um, so most of their work gets all done in those cruisers. They have to get to these calls. They have to patrol the areas. So this is a very important warrant article. We need to keep um, what basically what we do. We get that new cruiser that comes in. We remove another cruiser that comes out. So we stick with 11 cruisers. We don't, we don't add anymore. So we're looking for your support on the warrant article with the cruiser. You'll see that out there. That's in the town portion. Um, I believe it's asking for $66,000 for, now that includes the cruiser price and the upfitting of um, the cruiser. The upfitting is all the electronics inside um, to put in the middle with the gadgets, the radios, all that stuff to, so the officer can perform his uh, duties out on the roadway. So other than that, um, I got nothing more to go on with the month of January. Um, it's amazing we're already in a new year, 2023. Um, I hope everyone had a great holiday, uh, happy new year, and uh, we'll see you next month.